There are 13 eligibility categories under the IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, and it's important for parents to remember that an eligibility category is different than a diagnosis. Just because a child has a diagnosed disability does not necessarily mean that that child meets the eligibility criteria under the federal statute. So these are the definitions under the educational model as to whether or not a child is a special education child, a child with a disability, as defined by law. Here is the definition of hearing impairment. Hearing impairment means an impairment in hearing, whether permanent or fluctuating, that adversely affects a child's educational performance, but that is not included under the definition of deafness. Your state may have other categories or slightly different categories. Right. So there are the 13 definitions by federal law. And then again, your state can add to those, sl vary them slightly as long as they don't take away a child's right to receive services if they meet the criteria under the federal law. And it's important. I, I find, Julie, a lot of parents get hung up on which eligibility category the, the team selects. And obviously, the parents should be very integral to deciding which eligibility category, but it's important to remember this. Once you're found eligible for services, you're then entitled, your child is entitled to receive services based on their unique needs. It's not the case that the eligibility category drives the program. It's right. not supposed to be the case anyway. And I have so many parents who'll call me and they're confused. I'll give an example. A parent knows their child requires speech services and they are hung up on whether or not the eligibility category says that they have a speech and language impairment because they think I can't get those speech services unless that's the label. It doesn't work that way. It's not supposed to work that way. The way it's supposed to work under the law is that once you're found eligible under one of these categories, then at that point you get a program that meets your child's unique needs. And if that includes speech and language services, that's what the, the IEP, the individualized education program is supposed to include. So while I think it's very important as a practical matter to, to select the right eligibility category that really describes that child, I would say caution parents, don't get as hung up on which eligibility category you select.